Engineering Innovation Systems version 3.0, powered by the Innovation Engineering Institute, a collection of industry and academic experts grounded in data, hard data on how to help people increase speed and decrease risk with innovation. Some quick background. 1979, the Western world was in crisis because of the quality gap versus Japanese products. The solution was to apply system thinking, the system thinking of Dr. W. Edwards Deming. As he famously taught, 94% of failures are due to the system, 6% are due to the worker. Today, the crisis is how the internet, how the internet transforms companies and careers into price-driven commodities. Frankly, the world has changed. Competition today is global and everywhere. Price value transparency is putting increasing pressures on organizations' bottom line. And frankly, the customers are in control. They're in much more control than ever before. The result is today, if you're not meaningfully unique, you better be cheaper. So Dr. Deming made a big difference. In Japan, after World War II, he helped rebuild the, the country. In 1979 and 80, he rebuilt North America and famously known for the descendants of his work of Lean, Six Sigma, and others. But what does he have to do with today? Well, in his second mass market book, The New Economics, he wrote that the factory offers 3% of the opportunity for company improvement. See, 97% of the impact of system thinking lies in applying it to strategy, innovation, and how we work together. Okay, 3% cost and efficiency, 97% strategy, innovation, and how we work together. And that is the mission of innovation engineering. More specifically, to change the world. To change the world by enabling innovation by everyone, everywhere, every day, resulting in increased speed to market, up to a factor of six, and decreased risk of 30 to 80%. Importantly, there's no renting of gurus as part of this system. Rather, it's about system building. It's about investing in your leaders and your employees. There are three components of system building. Educate, enable, and energize. Educate is university grade education quality, taught so that all can master using our systems cycles to mastery approach. Enable is software, software that enables leadership and employees to easily apply the education to their work. And energize is about mentoring, Mentoring that energizes the startup, the education and software success. There's a lot that could be said about the pedigree, but its, it's fundamental dimension happened at Procter & Gamble, where a systems approach set a P&G innovation record where a small team took nine ideas to market in a period of 12 months. A finance department audit showed that they did it a fraction of the time. Now, if you're used to systems applications in a factory, these numbers are the kinds of numbers you would expect. What's unique is not the size of the numbers, but the area for which it was being applied. <clears throat> this led to a company named Eureka Ranch, established in 1986, which I, Doug Hall, founded. We worked on, <clears throat> excuse me, to work with companies around the world helping them transform innovation from a random gamble to a reliable system. Books have been written that defined the research pedigree of what we were doing. So you got three system options, but let me start first from the beginning. Everybody has a core innovation system for continuous improvement of offerings and, and for cost savings. Everybody has that. What you can do with innovation engineering is, is you can add a system for the front end. Say you need ideas, more choices for growth. You can use innovation engineering as a front end system and keep your core system. Option two, say you have core ideas, but you need leap ideas, the transformational ideas, and you wanna get them to market faster. Well, you can use innovation engineering as a leap innovation system. Lastly, if you want, you can make it your complete business operating system where you enable everyone everywhere every day for both growth, cost, quality systems, the whole collection. So three systems. All have benefits and consequences. When you accelerate ideas at the front end, if the existing system can't handle it, it'll cause some stress, but you can work through it. When you get the leap ideas going, that can cause some stress with regards to resources unless we can tighten up some of the core stuff. And as a business operating system, I mean, fundamentally, we're teaching old dogs new tricks. It's, a, it's about a bigger transformation. 
But you know the best part of this is the education and software are exactly the same. The only difference is where you're applying, where you're applying them. And in fact, many organizations start with a front end or a leap system and then migrate. And that's what we're seeing. Now, early on <coughs> with innovation engineering, we had a strategic decision to make with regards to our education, our software design. Option one was designed for control. To drive out risk, we would put in a lot of control. Option two was designed to enable, to enable teams. And classically, innovation systems are designed for control, to prevent mistakes, to prevent mistakes. Well, we chose to go the other approach. Our software and systems are designed to enable people. That's because we believe that when the work is enabled, that everybody wins, both management and the employees, when we can help them do their job faster. Now, core to innovation engineering is innovationengineeringlabs.com, and it's software designed to enable everybody to innovate. And the foundation of it are two subsystems, which is the classroom and the tools, these two tabs. The classroom is the foundation where we have the, all of the skills, the 48 skills that make up innovation engineering body of, body of um, knowledge. With the executive program, it takes about six months to certify with the projects that you do. With, in university, it takes about six semesters, or <clears throat> if you're on a classic schedule, about three years to go through it. Black belts go through 107 digital classes, a five-day innovation college, very compressed, 16 hands-on applications, and an experience, they get experience leading a project. Now, we also have a category called blue belt, <clears throat> and this is for management coaches, for the leadership. They go through just the first two parts. You can do the first two parts and then make the decision to go to black belt either, later, that's fine. And lastly, we have green belt, which is for the project leaders and teams, and they have a very simplified program that they go through. <clears throat> when you go through black belt, the assignments are basically doing the work. And 93% of your total time is spent applying it to your organization. You're basically leading a project. Okay, then we also have tools in memory bank. Create tools, communicate tools, commercialize tools. All of these are customizable, and some of them have got artificial intelligence built into them. You also have a private company memory bank where you can store your learnings and your information as you get it so that you can start to get some synergy amongst people on the team. Now, if you're working with any of the other systems of Six Sigma, Lean, Design Thinking, any of these, they integrate painlessly because they're all, frankly, descendants of Deming Plan, Do, Study, Act. And so they work in easily here. And we've got many companies that are integrating them in. So that's the foundation subsystems. Next up, we've got the operating system, the innovation pipeline and the collaboration cafe. The innovation pipeline is, a, is the fundamental um, organizing system which makes the project works. And our first element of this is a tool for enabling employees to get strategic clarity. You know, we set the growth strategy on what we call the blue card. This has the narrative that is very motivating to the employees to get them excited. The mission we need ideas for. Strategic exclusions, what we're not looking to do. Tactical constraints, the reality check on what can we do and not, and some exploration areas, which is some starting points. We use this for strategy, but within innovation engineering, it also applies to cost saving strategy and our systems improvements. See, for our cost savings, just like with growth, we might have to have a minimum level in order to be able to pursue it because we don't want to waste energy. Same with cost, only the reverse. If it's not at least a certain amount, we shouldn't be wasting our time, energy, and money on it. See, our goal is to get total strategic alignment on what is very important. And so if you want to use Lean or Six Sigma, fine, but let's make sure we've got clear strategic intent as to what it is that we're looking for. Now, the pipeline is built around Plan, Do, Study, Act, a weekly work system that makes it easy to get stuff done. Teams love this as it provides clarity and focus to what they're doing. It also has built-in checklists. The company system is documented and clear. What needs to be done, why it's important, how we do it. Sadly, at many organizations, we find very little documentation 
Very little, if any, standardized work with regards to our process for doing these things. Now, it's not that we're going to be rigid on this because we're going to improve these as we go along. But if we don't have clarity of what the existing system is, how can we ever build quality? The system's totally out of control. We can migrate, if you have a stage gate system, can be easily migrated over here because the stage gate systems will tend to define what needs to be done. We just need to take it further in defining why and how for different types of projects. Now the classic system is a development system where we have milestones and we run plan, do, study, act cycles to get this stuff done so that we build the momentum and keep it going. To this we add in the front of it a define and discover, that fuzzy front end it's called. Only here, instead of milestones, they're death threats. They're the things that we need to resolve before we go into development. Now, another leadership tool for enabling employees is clear roles. Management coach, project leader, and process coach. And these roles are very, very important. And so important that each one of them has a different sort of training need that we put with each one. Also, what's important is some disciplined rhythm. Weekly meetings to improve the products, projects. Monthly system summits to improve and customize the system itself. And then quarterly strategy summits to improve the blue card so that we get more clarity. So that's the guns, that's the, the guts, that's the backbone, if you would, of what we're doing. Next up is Collaboration Cafe. Now we know that through collaborating, there's somebody out there that knows something smart that can help us work smarter and faster. The problem we're finding is, is that nine out of 10 people in organizations, this is over 12,000 people measured, say they don't cooperate well in their organization. Well, there's lots of barriers to co cooperation and we've done a lot of research and we've done a lot of different versions of these kind of platforms. And version 3.0 is really designed to enable collaboration. And one of the keys to this is you have to give more control to the workers. So we've got one-click private networks, public and private responses, security tiers, easy to connect to inside and outside experts and, and security support desks. In other words, we've gone to extreme levels here to reduce the fear, the fear of getting in trouble if you go ask for help from one others. I know it may sound ridiculous, but that's the reality that we're dealing with. And so we're here to help. So that's your innovation operating system. Okay, the pipeline and collaboration, that's the thing that really runs the system. And it's founded in the classroom and the tools, the education and the tools. But we've got two other things, which are the turbochargers. Merwin Rapid Research and Patent ROI. Okay, 72% of managers report it takes a month or more to get quantitative research on an idea. So say I'm working on an idea and there's a risk and I want to go out to customers, it takes a month or more. That isn't fast, folks. So we've built a complete suite of programs from artificial intelligence systems of idea coach that can do it in microseconds to doubling an idea scan that can do it in minutes to things that take a few hours where we can do product tests. Here's, here's one project, a four-day innovation engineering accelerator. 407 separate tests were done, inputs were done in just four days. You can use this for external opportunities or if you're improving systems, running research inside an organization, statistical research can be done as well. The good news is, is that this data not only goes from here, but we can also take it up into systems where we've got investment grade Monte Carlo forecasts where we can run the forecast and introduce your innovation some 30,000 times to see the odds of success. The system has easy setup, automated statistical reports, and frankly, it's seven times smarter than humans when it comes to picking winning ideas. Okay, so that's one turbocharger. Here's the other one. It's called Patent ROI. It helps you find ideas and great deals with invention blueprints. File patents fast with ideas to patents and grow patent ROI with business translations. Here's a quick movie that shows you how Invention Blueprints works.
So that's Invention Blueprints, Ideas to Patents, enables anyone, anyone to be able to define and search a provisional patent in about an hour. Involves three plan, do, study, act cycles. Each one defined to help you get deeper and deeper so that you can find out if you've got something that you can actually turn into tangible intellectual capital. Now to realize return on investments, patents must be easy to understand. And so we offer three levels of translation from translation to spark decks, to turning into a concept, to turning it into a business opportunity. The Innovation Engineering Labs portal is preloaded with global best practices. And one of the things clients have told us is they don't want to spend six months or nine months customizing something. So we made it work right out of the box. And then what happens is your pioneers, the people that start the first projects and the first ones trained, start to adapt the system, the language, the stimulus, the policies, the math for your culture and industry as you go. Virtually the entire thing can be customized. You know, Dr. Deming was asked how he would summarize his message in a few words. He said, I would say it has to do with pride of work. So how are we doing on pride and work? How would you rate? How would you rate the overall quality of work done by your company? Sadly, 95% don't feel pride. You see, 94% of failures are due to the system. So when you improve the system, then workers can work smarter and feel real pride in work. The innovation engineering system helps leadership ignite employee engagement. In order to get employee engagement, employees must be willing and they must be able. When we have a clear and motivating narrative on the blue card, then the employees are engaged and excited. When we give them the education, the tools, and the authority in the role as project leaders or as part of teams, then they are able. So three system choices. You can use it for the front end. You can use it for leap innovations, keeping your core system the way it is. Or you can use it as a full business operating system. But don't worry, you can start anywhere and get started. Now the smartest way to start is for leadership to learn how to apply system thinking to strategy, innovation, and how we work together. And that is for a couple of members of the leadership to go to Innovation Engineering Blue Belt, to become management coaches and get depth of understanding. Because that's the only way you're going to really understand what it is. And it's, a, it's basically, you're going to watch the videos, and they're short videos, and it's five intensive days at the Eureka Ranch where we take you through create, communicate, commercialize. You do a complete three-dimensional experience and then systems for sustainable change. We recommend this as the very first step because we've learned that leadership really does matter. When the leader is engaged, it's almost like a step change improvement in the success that's realized. Now, if the leadership is not sure about the system approach or you're unsure about it, then the option you have is to experience a demonstration project. And I, I want to be clear, these are demonstration projects of the system. They are not going to be putting the system in. We can do an accelerator. Patentable leap innovations for transforming profitability, where we'll come up with real patentable inventions. Whether it's for saving money, which we just did for a big aerospace company, or whether it's d done for new products, you will get patents. Or a create session. These are for closer in core innovations for growth and cost savings. Although the way I like to do these is through problem solving on an existing project. Say you got a project that's got a problem, use a create session to see if you can solve it. How can you tell that we've got a real system? Well, first off, there's an operations manual. If there isn't an operations manual, then it can't be much of a system. To improve ideas, it makes the ideas better. The corporate average in surveys we've done is, is that the average idea when it comes out of development versus when it went in, it loses about half its value through compromises. With innovation engineering, they grow some 28%. You can also tell it's a system because we walk the talk. 20% of our revenue is reinvested in R&D to improve education and software systems. Here's what the data says. Enabling everyone to innovate, we're at 90% plus. Increased speed to market up to a factor of six. Decreased risk, 30 to 80% is what we're seeing. Increased development success, 250% and over 8 billion in process. So now let me give you just two quick stories. One is a small company, one's a large. The first is a small company, Sheldon Scott, Whitney Blake Company. They make wiring connectors and cables and they created a product called FireTough for firemen because they've learned that their cables, there's going to be a regulation coming in, but they're going to get ahead of it. 
Because what happens is, is when the microphone cable goes, the fireman loses contact when they're in a fire. Here's Sheldon Scott, a big Boston Red Sox fan, telling his story. Okay, Doug, here we are. We're at Fenway Park, and uh, Whitney Blake has a great update for the IE community. Back in June at the leadership retreat, we were able to develop a product, an idea for a product for firemen to save lives. We introduced that product concept into the portal in August 2013. By October, we had sat there and we were able to go do define discovery and into develop and actually made a working prototype in eight days. First time ever. In November, the NFDA was so excited that we were working on a cable to solve their problems that they let us use their NIST lab outside of Pittsburgh for nothing. We tested our cable, the cable passed, we tested the cable 10 times for the same test, it passed all 10 times. It was awesome, totally awesome. Then we had a customer call us right after Thanksgiving looking for a similar product for the application. We said, hey, we've got this new product that we're coming out with called FireTuff, but we need to file a patent. So in December 2013, we filed a patent. In March of this year, I was sitting with the customer, and the customer was actually pitching me, the supplier, for an exclusive on my product. I'll tell you, that's the place I want to be more often. With Innovation Engineering, we can do that. So, Sheldon Scott, Fenway Park, Game 2 of the season, signing off. Have a good one, guys. Bye. <laughs> So let's go to a larger company. They're kind of a mid-sized company. Let's go to a larger company, the Macallan. Fine Scottish whiskey. It's grown 12x. Profits grown 1,200% since they've been engaged. And Ken Greer, who runs the business, who's a blue belt and has actually decided to go on for black belt now, says if anyone has any questions about how well it works, have them give me a call. There it is. Innovation Engineering, Innovation Systems. Our mission, to change the world. To change the world by enabling innovation by everyone, everywhere, every day, resulting in increased speed to market and decreased risk.